Okay, let's um, view information about the sphenoid bone. Um, make sure that you make note again that it is a single bone that makes up the cranium. Keep the, your bone count going along. There are two more, the sphenoid and the ethmoid. Um, the sphenoid bone is um, present as the base of the cranium and the sides of the skull, as well as the floor and sides of the orbits. And you can see it in this image as very bright fuchsia pink color. In this image, it is blue. Okay, this is a real skull cut open. And this is the image that you have um, in your um, picture sheet in your foldable um, images. And so I'm, I suggest that you use this in order to color it properly. In this view, you can see that the sphenoid is at the back of the orbit. And then also it is over here on the side. Um, it, basically, the area that people refer to as the temple is really the sphenoid bone. So your temple is not really your temporal bone. And that's hard for people to remember. So, And you can see that in this picture very clearly, right above the cheekbone. Um, and remember, this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone right here, this orange. Right above that, you um, can feel this little indentation right here. And that's where your temporal, excuse me, see? Um, that's where your sphenoid bone is. Okay, here it is again in blue, nicely highlighted. And the first thing that you need to know about the sphenoid bone is that there is a structure called the cella tersica. And it is a saddle-shaped depression, meaning that um, something can just sit there in it. And it holds the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland is very important because it is a gland that is considered to be the master gland because it is responsible for so many major body functions. Um, it is responsible for growth, metabolism, reproductive cycles, um, many, many, many more things. And that's part of the endocrine system. So this is the sphenoid bone and this little cup or um, indentation or saddle is where the cella tersica will sit. There are two sphenoidal sinuses and you can see that here in the middle of this image um, and here in this um, picture. <coughs> really all you have to write in your notes are that there are sphenoidal sinuses. Now what you'll notice here, and we are not to this yet, but there, this is the nasal cavity and we'll talk about that shortly. But here's the sphenoidal sinus right behind the nasal cavity. So you can do your labeling. You can um, stop this at some point to do this if you haven't done it yet, but most of you did it in class. Then we have the ethmoid bone, and there is, again, only one of those, and it is very odd in shape, and there are two sides to it. It's actually in front of the sphenoid bone, Whoops! and um, what you can see is there's one side here and one side here, and imagine that the nose is right here. Okay, so this is the middle of the ethmoid, and this is the nasal septum. So that middle divider is partially made up of the ethmoid bone. Um, here you can see um, views of the ethmoid bone. Now this is very small here, but you can kind of see the blue in the corner of the orbit and at the top of the, um, the um, nasal septum. So the first structure you need to know here is the cribriform plate. And you can see right here that there are little spongy holes in it. And all the cribriform plate does is it joins the two sides of the ethmoid bone. Then you have the cristagalli that is sticking up off the middle. And you can't really see it very well in this image, but you'll see it in another one. And all that is is an attachment for membranes that enclose the brain. However, you will recognize this as its important um, structure when we dissect the cat brain because what will happen is it will be difficult for you to remove the membranes around the brain without pulling them free from the cristagalli. There are also structures called the superior and middle nasal conche and they support mucous membranes in the nose. The nose is right here um, and you know the, uh, the cartilaginous part of the nose would be right here. And you could see this great image. Here's the cristagalli sticking up. Here's the cristagalli cella tersica. And then finally, you have the perpendicular plate that projects downward from the middle, and that forms the nasal septum. Here's a deviated septum, requires surgery. And here are six ethmoidal sinuses.